All right, welcome back to this episode of Kingsport Blog Video Update. Um, sorry I missed you two weeks ago, so this may be a, a slightly longer uh, update uh, in order to catch us up. But uh, some great news last night, the Board of Mayor and Alderman approved the Border Region Retail Tourism District. That is a special piece of legislation that allows uh, border counties in Tennessee to capture uh, the state portion of the sales tax to help provide incentives for super regional retailers. And super regional being retailers that only will locate at one place in a metro area. So we're trying very hard to position Kingsport to take advantage of that state law uh, and, and provide development at Tri-Cities Crossing. There are 950 acres that we have identified at the intersection of I-26 and I-81 near the Tri-Cities Crossing exit as well as the Eastern Star exit um, that would uh, be a prime location for regional retail development. Um, most of that property has been assembled by one landowner and uh, we have already begun meeting with them on development plans. Also, the state of Tennessee is going to begin the Fordtown Road relocation, which has been long planned in that area. They're going to start that in December of this year. Uh, this goes all the way back to 1988 when the Economic Development Board purchased property at the intersection of the two interstates, realizing that at some point in the future that was going to be a very strategic development location. So this is certainly something that's been happening for 20 plus years. On the move to Kingsport front, uh, during the four month period for this fiscal year, which is July 1st through October 31st, we've had a net of 521 new families that have moved to, to our community. That represents about $29 million in total consumer expenditures when you consider that each one of those families has about 2.3 people per family. So comparing that uh, this fiscal year to date to the last five years, we've actually seen an uptick in out-of-state relocation and that's pretty significant because most places aren't seeing uh, out-of-state relocation simply because the economy is so difficult people have to sell their house in another state before they could move to Kingsport but that does continue to be a very strong source for us. New construction for residential in Kingsport continues to be down about 58 percent but again that is very consistent with the national standards. Uh, there just are not many new housing starts uh, at this time. For the year to date, uh, the top states that have moved here, and again, this is just the past four months, are Virginia, which is no surprise, North Carolina, Florida, Ohio, Texas, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and South Carolina. We also track metros that are moving to Kingsport. Uh, we can go to, the, to a website that will identify all the zip codes within 35 miles of a particular city and then we can use that to compare it to the zip codes that have moved to Kingsport and identify who has uh, moved here from metro areas so we can kind of drill down into particular states and see you know if we're talking about North Carolina then where in North Carolina so the number one metro out of all the ones that we track is Charlotte with 38 families that have moved here uh, Orlando is number two followed by Tampa Washington DC Asheville Boone, North Carolina, Daytona, Greensboro, Jacksonville, Florida, and Chicago. The number one source of people moving to Kingsport, I mean out of state is a very inter interesting topic, but the number one volume of people moving to Kingsport come from within 35 miles of our community. Uh, you often hear City Manager John Campbell talking about providing amenities to make Kingsport the community of choice within the Northeast Tennessee, Southwest Virginia region. And that's the reason we want people to choose Kingsport as a residence. Don't just work here, live here as well. So it may surprise you to find out that the number one donor city during that time period is Johnson City. Number two is Churchill, number three Bluntville, Jonesboro, Mount Carmel, followed by Bristol, Fall Branch, Gate City, Rogersville, and Knoxville. Retail sales tax collections are the best that they've been in six years. That's tremendous news uh, for our local economy because almost a fourth of our city budget is dependent on sales tax and that is the single most controllable uh, expenditure for a family. So if you don't choose to make a purchase in Kingsport, we don't get any sales tax. So we're constantly working to be your community of choice for shopping as well. Um, all the retail sectors in the community have continued to report good results and keep in mind this also includes the time that uh, we had, had lost Hobby Lobby and a couple of other retailers due to some catastrophic storm events. Now they are back online and we are looking forward to their re renewed success here in the Kingsport area. 
In data recently released by the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development, Sullivan County and Washington County continue to be in the top 10 lowest unemployment rates in Tennessee. Sullivan County has about 8.1 percent and Washington County has about 8.3 percent. Uh, among the cities in the region, uh, Kingsport continues to be the lowest unemployment rate. And that's a pretty significant number because you consider that compared to this time last year, we also have more people in the workforce and we have more people employed. So those numbers are constantly changing. And as the labor force grows, that means you have to find more employment for a, a bigger pool of, of people. And so that number, although the total number upticked a little bit on the unemployment rate in Kingsport, the total number of people looking for work uh, in the labor force also increased and the number of employed actually increased as well. So again, some good news on that front. Uh, in the building permit area, we've had $3.25 million in new building permits for the month of October, uh, which we just received a couple of days ago. Um, the top permits are free service tire on Eastern Star. Uh, McDonald's on West Stone Drive is doing a complete remodel. Uh, Beef O'Brady's in downtown Kingsport at the Food City Shopping Center at Kingsport Press. Uh, the Northeast State Regional Center for um, Automotive at, at the Powell Barger Center on Center Street is uh, an, another one and uh, remodeling of Model City Apartments as well as Holston Medical Group's new hand clinic. 32 new businesses opened in October of 2011. Uh, those are available at our website at development.kingsporttn.gov if you'd like to look at who those are. Uh, of those 32, almost every one of them is a very small business and so that does fit very nicely with our strategy of continuing to diversify our local economy and shelter um, you know, shelter folks from being at one company that may have a good year or a bad year. The, the more diversification, uh, the better you spread that risk across your community. So Kingsport continues to be a great place to start a new small business as well. Planning Commission update over the past 18 months. Uh, the city has been focusing on annexation in the Colonial Heights area. The Board of Van Alderman recently approved two additional areas that are going to bring more than 1,500 residents into the city uh, in the Kendrick Creek Road and Meadow Lane area. So by the end of this calendar year, Kingsport will officially top the 50,000 mark, which is uh, in, in a, a goal that has been out there for a number of years. Um, not that the world's going to change because we reached 50,000, but it has been certainly something we've been striving to do for a number of years. So congratulations to our planning staff. Ken Williams has done a beautiful job of that, and uh, we will be at 50,000 by the end of the calendar year. That's your quick update. If you'd like to receive this information on a regular basis, you can write to me at kingsportblog at gmail.com or send me a friend request on Facebook.